يا نفس إن لم تغفري لا تجزعي Say that he, the creator, is absolutely one. One whom all depends while he depends upon none. He begets not, nor is he begotten. And there is none in the creation that has any similitude to him. This denies several things. One, if he's absolutely one, it doesn't mean the number one. That he is one above the creation and one single God. Not divided, no family, no board of trustees, no advisors, no lawyer, no bookkeeper, no company, no many gods sitting next to him, no mother, no father, no daughter, no son, no relative gods, no many gods, only God, God alone. That's what God has always said. And that's what Jesus said. The greatest commandment is the first of the commandments. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And thou shalt have no other gods along with him. And thou shalt not worship anything in the heavens or the earth or any graven images in the heavens and the earth or in the sea below. Now, this is what the Quran sets forward as the statement of God. Who Allah, he is Allah. الذي لا إله إلا هو besides whom none has the right to be worshipped الملك the king القدوس the pure السلام the one who is free from all defects المؤمن the giver of security العزيز the most mighty الجبار the compeller المتكبر the supreme Subhanallah amma yushrikun High is Allah above everything that they associate with him Who Allah, he is Allah Al-Khaliq, the creator Al-Bari', the inventor Al-Musawwir, the giver of forms Lahu al-Asma'u al-Husna To him belongs the most perfect of all names يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Everything in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah and He is the most mighty, the most wise. هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ He is the first and the last. وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ In the outward and the inward. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ And He has knowledge of all things. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then he established himself on the throne. He knows everything that comes out of the earth and everything that goes into the earth. And he is with you wherever you may be. Allah Almighty sees everything that you do. Who is the first? He has no beginning. And the last? He will have no end. Despite the passage of these infinite years, Allah has never slept. This is Allah. Allah owes you nothing. Allah owes you nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your beat. Allah azza wa jal is free from all, from anything. Allah azza wa jal needs nothing and no one. We need him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be fooled. Don't let shaitan play with your mind. In the authentic hadith, in the hadith could see Allah azza wa jal says, Ya ibadi, who's Allah azza wa jal speaking to? Allah says, Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves, if the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, all, not some, 
all of you were to come together collectively to worship me and worship me and worship me until you become like the most pure heart amongst you. This does not increase my greatness in any way, shape or form. And the opposite is true, you little gangster. Ya ibadi, O my slaves. If all of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively and all of you were to sin, sin, steal, cheat, sell drugs, prostitute, do whatever you desire, you little gangster. Do whatever you think makes you look cool and hectic on the streets. Allah says clearly, if all of you, not some, if all of you were to do it collectively and to you become like the most criminal heart amongst you, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk in any way, shape or form. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah is Al-Malik. Allah is free. Antum al fuqara ila Allah. You are the destituted ones to Allah. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet of Allah sitting with Sahaba, he says to them, I see what you don't see, and I hear what you don't hear. He says, He says, the heavens have squeaked, and they have every right to squeak. So Sahaba are amazed. What do you mean, O oh Prophet of Allah? What do you mean that the heavens have squeaked? What do you mean that the seven heavens have squeaked? Everything we know about astronomy is not even 1% of what's really out there. And our solar system, our galaxy is one of millions and millions that are out there. So the scholar is saying, if we were given one second to name every single star that is in our galaxy. You ready for this? You will need 300 trillion years and you wouldn't name every star that is in our galaxy. And all this is in Samawat al-Ula, is in the first heavens. The Prophet of Allah is saying the seven heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. Why? Why are Prophet of Allah why have they squeaked? You know, sometimes you put a lot of weight onto something. So it starts making noise. It starts giving way because it can't carry the load. The Prophet of Allah says, the seven heavens can no longer carry the load. The load of what? He says, There isn't room in all these heavens for four fingers, except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. And you think Allah needs your money on the way out, huh? You think Allah cares whether you pray or you don't. There isn't room for four fingers in all the heavens except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. Angels, from the moment they're created to the moment they stand before Allah, one continuous sajda. They never did anything else. One continuous sajda for billions of years. Yet when they stand before Allah, they say, Oh Allah, forgive us. Forgive us, Ya Allah, for we did not give haq to your ibadah. We didn't give rights. We didn't worship you the way you should be worshipped. In the hadith could see, in the authentic hadith, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, He says, Ya ibadi, are my slaves. Every single one of you is hungry, except whom I feed. Every one of you is hungry, except whom I feed. Today, when you go to buy a meal, you think, I bought this meal. No, you're wrong. Allah fed you. So people start looking at their meals and he starts having pride and arrogance. That I don't eat this and I don't eat that. I only eat specific foods. Brother, it's Allah that feeds you. Allah says, oh my slaves, every one of you with the exception of none, every one of you is naked except whom I clothe. For you, Allah will move mountains. The same Allah, the same Allah that split the ocean in half for Musa. The same Allah 
that split the moon for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The same Allah that stopped the land from its earthquake when Umar ibn al-Khattab hit it. The same Allah that gave life to the dead for Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. The same Allah that made the river, the Nile River flow once more. Is the same Allah that's waiting for your next dua. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Allah, the Almighty Creator, the Sustainer of the heavens and the earth. There is no other benefactor, there is no other God except He. He is the life giver, the self sustainer, the eternal, and the only absolute. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. He requires that benefactor, that creator requires no rest, and nor does that benefactor require any kind of sleep because fatigue does not affect that creator. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. Everything in the heavens and the earth, whether it is seen, whether it is unseen, subtle, evident, high, low, microscopic, in the heavens or the earth, inside or outside, it all belongs to that Creator. من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه so who is it? Who is it among the creatures? Who is it among the creatures, the men or the jinn or the angels or the animals? Who is it that can contend with that benefactor and that creator? Who is it that can achieve anything without his permission? يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He knows what goes in front of them in their lives, their history, and He knows what follows them in their posterity and their history. He knows completely because their lives are within the capsule of His knowledge. وَلَا يُحِيْتُونَ بِشَاءٍ مِّنْ إِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ and they will never, the creatures, the human beings with intelligence, they will never be able to snatch or harbor or harness any knowledge from him other than what he allows them to do so. His throne, his throne, according to his majesty, extends above the heavens and the earth, above the waters, above the galaxies, outside the realm of time and space. And he does not suffer any fatigue. Nothing is taken from him. If he gives the whole world what it asks for, it doesn't decrease any of his wealth. And sustaining the heavens and the earth doesn't require any effort because he owns it and he sustains it by his will. And he is Ali al -Azim. He is the high, he's the mighty, he's the powerful, he's the sovereign, he's the owner, he's the ruler, he's the Lord, he's the creator. That's a description of God. So I ask you, do you know anybody else that you can describe that way? You know some nations? You know some tribes? You know some kings, some presidents, some companies, 
some individuals, your father, your uncle, some heroes? Do you know somebody that has that description? No, you don't. Of course you don't.